And um, are we just going to jump right into public comments? Um, yes, that's correct. Um, I will note here just for good of the order, uh, we do have uh, Kina, who is out for an excuse absent today, um, uh, who uh, won't be joining us today. Um, and then Manny Brown uh, is currently not here. And should we introduce our quasi guest? Yes, so we are, so for public comment, um, we have a few folks here in um, um, in public here. First off, we have Lucrecia Dolchozo. She is um, here um, as more of an observer, but she is um, currently on the equity board. She was a former Human Services Commission, and we are very excited to welcome her on the Human Services Commission um, in the vacant position. So thank you so much for being here this evening. Starting um, in May. Yeah, um, officially starting in May, but she's here with us today here in April. Very thankful to have you here. Perfect. Thank and then you, I, oh, you're welcome. And then I also want to intru introduce, we have three folks here signed up for public comment. Um, first off, we have uh, Ron Zenko uh, from St. Vincent de Paul, uh, Mary Queen of Peace. So he'll be speaking about his organization. We also have Jamie Langoria uh, from Domestic Violence Survivor over here. And then virtually we have Irene Mueller from Essentials First. So welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. All right, and I will invite Ron up here and we will have four minutes for uh, public comment. Thank you all for uh, attending tonight. Uh, I think some of you may recognize me from when I was the guy who was late uh, coming to the meeting. <laughs> I couldn't find a place to go. Bert would only have our grant writer came and, and gave me a pretty good understanding of what's going on. Very clean of peace, uh, St. Vincent de Paul, I'm the president. And um, I'm here tonight to, to talk about the grant that we submitted. Uh, we did get our grant approved recently by St. Vincent de Paul because there was some confusion in the airport about who, you know, whether we were crossing over to St. Joe's, uh, St. Vincent de Paul. The boundaries are completely different. We cover the northwest portion of Issaquah. That's where all of our health goes. As a matter of fact, 53% of our aid last year assistance went to the city of Issaquah. The total spend that we have in the Sammamish Supply area. Uh, St. Joe's is completely different. They submit their grant for a completely different section that they cover. So there's no duplication there. Um, some of the apartment complexes we cover um, are uh, basically the, the YWCA, which is the biggest, um, Issaquah View, um, Langara, Timbers, Park Hill, and the Highlands at Winhaven Apartments. Have quite a bit of uh, folks who need assistance, and we, we do help them. Um, last year, we submitted uh, basically provided assistance for about sixty-five thousand dollars. Like I said, was a little bit more than fifty percent of our total spend. Um, so, again, we, we've got St. Vincent de Paul now understanding the difference in boundaries because they, when they saw that coming through the portal, they said, "Oh, we got a duplication," and we had to explain to them and show them the neighbors we serve versus what St. Joe's serves. So they all. Fully totally understand that now and it's already there. Um, again, uh, you know, financially we are we are in need of funds like many uh, nonprofits, and uh, and hope that uh, will be looked at uh, and uh, give us some consideration. So thank you again for your for your attention and consideration. Thank you, Ron. Yep. Right. Thank, thank you so much for your time, Ron. Thanks for coming out. Thank you, Ron. The information. Okay, excellent. And then I'm going to um, now invite Jamie Langoria. Feel free to be on it or you're comfortable. Thanks so much. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jamie. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce myself as a person before I introduce my organization. Um, I am an Issaquah resident, a single mom of three boys, um, been in the area for about 17, 18 years. Very familiar with all of the services that Issaquah offers in regards to rental assistance, domestic violence, food used all of those resources myself as a single mom and raising three kids here in the city. So very, very familiar with everything that this wonderful city has to offer. However, um, I feel that there is a huge gap in some of our domestic violence services. And so that is what prompted me to start my own organization, which I got my nonprofit for last March. So just over a year. Um, for the last year, we've been operating strictly on donations and our board members' um, funds. We kind of just pool together to help individuals out. We've been spreading um, word by word of mouth. So we have no web page yet. Um, we don't have really anything but word of mouth. And, you know, we've helped, um, I think we've helped six people in one year just by donations and our own pooling of money. So what our organization 
aims to do. And I'd like to also mention that our organization is um, board members is 75% black by box. So I feel that that's a huge gap that we also have here in Issaquah. So I feel like we're filling that gap, equity and funding. Um, and then the other gap is a lot has changed since COVID in regards to rental assistance, domestic violence assistance. Um, you know, there's no assistance for anybody who is in, imminently fleeing a domestic violence situation right now. There's nowhere that anyone could call and get help and leave right this moment. And many things stop people from leaving, right? Pets, kids, school, finances, cell phones, all of those things. And so um, we're asking the city of Issaquah for our first time funding this year, asking you guys to really look at our application for first time funding. Um, we want to, our main goals for, um, with the funding would be short-term housing, hotel vouchers, um, medium and long-term rental assistance, cell phones, temporary shelter, boarding for pets, clothing and hygiene supplies. And then we also are linked up with a behavioral health services a group called For the Count for the Culture Counseling. Um, and they operate virtually in Pierce and King County. And we have a contract with them um, and we can pay for um, those that are underinsured or need to have like counsel follow-up counseling services. So anyhow, that is our organization called Domestic Violence Survivors. And uh, just really like for you guys to take a look at um, funding us for the first time this year. Thank you. Jamie, yeah. Jamie okay. used to be on the Human Services Commission. I remember her. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jamie. Really nice to have you there. Thank you All right, excellent. And then we still have um, one more uh, public comment. I'm going to invite Irene here. Thank you for going on screen. Good to see you. Um, Hi, Irene. You've got Is four. it possible to share slides with you guys while I'm talking? Uh, yes. Do you have access to do that? Yes. Uh, the share button is grayed out at this moment. I was wondering if that was. Okay. Thank you. Hold on one moment. For sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. Monica? I talk fast. I find it's helpful to have the words up at the same time um, for me and everyone else. Um, I thought she said domestic violence survivors, but I, is yeah. that right? Is it a is it a national organization with a local chapter? No, started That's what I thought. So maybe doesn't. Have a website or? She said it's okay. They don't have. Okay, I missed that. Irene, are you? Do you have the share button now? I sure do. Are you guys able to see this? Yes. I'm trying to get it to go full screen, but it's yeah. not a yeah. oh, okay. doing the thing. Yeah. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. I will start my timer. All right, Irene, I'm going to give you four minutes. You are good to go. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to breeze through the beginning part because I know a lot of you have talked to us before. Um, we're Essentials First. We're a 501c3 nonprofit with locations in Bellevue, Redmond, Kent, and Seattle. And we exist because of a gap in essential services around hygiene uh, for folks who rely especially on assistance for basic needs. Current programs like EBT and WIC do not cover any essential hygiene supplies for personal care or house care. This impacts refugees, families with children and elders, disabled individuals and their families, and many folks in many places of transition in or out of things like housing, incarceration, domestic violence, etc. Um, the need is increasing rapidly. That's one of the reasons that we wanted to come talk to you is let you know what we're seeing. We had a 265% increase for last year to two years ago to one year ago, and this year we've already seen half of who we saw last year by the middle of April. Um, so we're looking at another increase like that this year. Um, thousands and thousands of households without the means to uh, secure these things on their own. Um, we are trying to address this gap in three ways. Our community kits program is direct distribution of two different kinds of kits to individuals in need of these supplies, and then volume distribution is partnering with food banks. We supply and deliver pallet quantities of these things to food banks and they can distribute them through their existing infrastructure to their existing community connections and enrich what's available to communities and places they can already access. Um, these are the two kinds of kits that we distribute. One of them is designed for folks who it's about a, a month's worth of household and personal supplies for a, a family and one of them is more designed for the individual immediate needs of one person who's underhoused. Um, we opened three new locations last year. We're now in Kent, Redmond and Seattle as well as in Bellevue. Um, in Issaquah, 
we, despite not having a location there currently at all, we've already served 154 Issaquah individuals this year from 34 different households. 62 of these individuals were children, eight of these households identified as having disabled household members, and eight of these households identified as having refugees in the household. Um, they all qualify as low or very low income by HUD standards, and we saw folks from Issaquah in Bellevue, Redmond, and Kent, multiple households in all of these locations. So we see that folks from Issaquah are coming to find us wherever we are because they are in need of these things, and we're hoping that you can help us make them more accessible to Issaquah residents by supporting us partnering with organizations in Issaquah um, through the volume distribution program and or the community kits program to make these things more readily available there. Um, these are some examples of the notes in the client intakes from Issaquah households that came to see us. A single woman who lost her job and her husband around the same time, single parents struggling to cover basic needs with multiple kids, families who lack language access to a lot of services asking for help with referrals, which we were able to provide, uh, refugee families with no jobs and no resources looking to meet their basic needs while they get established. Um, this is just an example of how our volume distribution program works. We have done this in Issaquah before in 2021. We partnered with the National Guard to deliver bulk hygiene supplies uh, in partnership with the Issaquah Food Bank. So this is sort of what it would look like to do the volume distribution program in Issaquah with this or other food banks. We'd be delivering these pallet size quantities for distribution through those existing programs. And then advocacy at your level just means, you know, keeping hygiene in mind when you guys are talking about basic needs and keep in mind that this is as pressing as things like housing and health care and child care and disability services because this impacts everybody's mental health, physical health, public health at school, at work, our ability to show up and participate in our community. Um, and then here's some cute photos of our community who pack our kits, help distribute them, advocate for hygiene at all levels and make all of this happen. These blue bags are our, our bigger kits that we distribute. Um, so thank you so much for letting me come talk to you all today. We did submit an application for the collaborative this year, and we are hopeful that we'll have the opportunity to partner with you all and reach even more folks in Issaquah. Um, we know that this makes a big difference in everybody's lives, and we uh, hope you'll help us do more of that this year. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Irene. Thanks, Irene. I will send you those slides. That's a lot of work. Yes. Yeah. I warned you. I warned you. I had four minutes, and I had to... I had to Oh, you're right on the slides. Excellent work. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome to, of course, stay or you're welcome to pop off. So thank you for your time. Thank you so much for the Okay, are we ready to move into the approval of minutes? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Bob. you. Um, okay, and I guess the reason why we are uh, approving February as well as March is did we not have a quorum at the March meeting? March was the thing in Redmond. Yeah, so March March was actually canceled yeah. for thank um, you. Thank a you. holiday, and then we had a right. special meeting for the yeah. equity training. Okay, so the, the, the March the meeting so the, is the equity training. That's correct. Yes, yeah. Okay, um, does anybody want to make a motion? Can, we, can I make a motion to approve both sets of minutes, or do they need to be done individually? I think they can be done together. Yeah, and then if, uh, uh, yeah, and if you have any, we can just note if you have any uh, okay. minutes to any of Then I'm going to make a motion that we um, approve the minutes from February and March. I second. Does anybody want to talk about? Okay, does it, uh, we can take a vote. I'm going to do it a little bit different. Does anybody um, not approve? Okay, they were approved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now we are going to move on to uh, the discussion of um, the Joint Eastside Human Services meeting. And Jaime is going to take the lead on this. I will do my best. Um, so do we have the, the PowerPoint or the... You can up yeah. Quick. yeah, so um, as alluded to in March, um, you know, Redmond, Issaquah, Kirkland, Sammamish uh, folks got together and had a training through Community Rise. I think, Can I just ask, okay, I'm sorry, yeah. before you get really deep, how many were able to attend either virtually or in person? Okay, okay, good. <clears throat> okay, thank Actually, you. So we have community rights come in with Brianna and Carrie kind of facilitating the discussion. Um, I, it was kind of nice to, one of the things I grabbed from is just having true definitions to some of this uh, uh, vernacular when it comes to uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, and I just wanted to, I brought the flyer, I think it's in the last page, but I'm going to just read it out quick loud when it comes to equity, 
isn't the full access and equal access to opportunity, power, and resources so that all people achieve their full potential and thrive. Equity is an ardent journey towards well-being as defined by those most negatively, negatively affected. So throughout the training and learning and, and, and exercises, which is really, I would say. We don't want you to read really fast. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'll, I'll go back. But no, I'm teasing because she's. No, no, no. I, I wanted to say is that as we look at grant applications, it was really to, hey, how do where do we stand around equity? How do we check our biases? There is agreements being made and having discussions around it. And when we say equity is really looking at the most marginalized, impacted folks within our community. And the training was surrounded around that is getting together, reporting our, our own biases, talk about our own experiences, and then speaking from there. And how does that relate as commissioners? Do better in our community. So, Redmond, Issaquah, Kirkland, Sammamish all spoke to what they do. Um, so, I would start with that. And I want to say, Doc Constantine, he's a key county executive. I love what he said here. The, the prosperity of our region depends on every person having a fair chance to fulfill his or her or their potential. Um, I'm going to go down to the next slide. No, you're fine. <clears throat> the takeaways. So some of the takeaways, and this is something I think uh, most cities were kind of reporting out is uh, we're advocates for the community. We're not the judge or jury. Uh, be aware of our biases uh, that do work to practice this battle with them. Actively seek to invest those grassroots community-based organizations who you believe can do the work in ways that other mainstream organizations may not be able to. And this is something that came up last time, whereas looking at grassroots versus, you know, the larger players. Um, work together to the group of organizations that will collectively meet the unique needs of each person in our community, recognizing this requires multiple approaches. And when they mention multiple approaches, we're talking about culturally, uh, LGBTQ plus community, and just kind of having that kind of the equity forefront. And so to our last bullet point, uh, when reviewing applications, I think one of the things that they really kind of pressed is being vulnerable with our discussions, being vulnerable where you stand and look at the applications and to have, you know, productive, honest discussions when looking to approve some of these applications. Excellent. You want to, um, I was going to go to the picture. Yeah, yeah, if you can go to the picture and then. We did have a, I would say, a lengthy conversation, I think, and it was good for the training to kind of break down, again, definitions of what equality is, what equity is, liberation, and I'm assuming folks have seen this kind of baseball picture uh, when it comes to having, for all folks, have access to uh, resources, and how does that show up within our communities? So we were kind of using this image as a way to look at our grant making systems within Issaquah or Redmond, Issaquah, uh, Sammamish and uh, Kirkland. Has everybody seen this slide before? It's really a classic. Yes. I hadn't seen with liberation. I thought that especially for grant making, yeah. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. What if you just tear down the fence, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, in terms of access? Yeah, I have to admit, I don't think I've seen it with liberation before. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, any other comments from you all from this image? I know some of y'all attended as well um, when it comes to this uh, image. Not that image so much, but I thought they did a nice job of encouraging us to speak with commissioners from other cities. And I I appreciated that opportunity to kind of, you know, hear this the common challenges that we face in our communities. And there's a leaf, I think, the next, oh, this one here too. This is where I think it was really great. We didn't dive too much into the definitions, but I think it was good to kind of step back around what is structural racism, race in the U.S., targeted universal uh, equity, social justice, uh, a fair system. Um, and I think it was kind of, I would say, just for me personally, sometimes it's good to have a good 
working definition so then we can kind of see where everyone's at. Um, so this is the definitions they utilized uh, throughout the two, three hour uh, training, learning. Um, I mean, the other thing that we did on this that I know I appreciate it if I can speak on this and I'd love to hear some of your input of your experience, but we had, a, 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 they asked us to, um, if you were talking to an eight year old, how would you explain inequity? Oh, no. How would you, you that explain race really in the US at all? Powerful, yeah. yeah. So I'd love to hear some of your like thoughts on that practice. I, I was taken back by that. That was a good learning lesson for me too. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on that? The way I, I was being vulnerable in my discussion, I think we partnered up mm -hmm. and I said, uh, the way I would describe is, you know, my journey is not the norm in terms of trying to be in systems to uh, thrive. And so sometimes we need extra support. And that means uh, mentorship, housing, um, you know, school access. And I think those, I think for me to break it down to an eight-year-old is like most folks of color are, it's a little tougher. And so that's kind of the way I was breaking it. I think you and I were in that group together. Um, yeah, to me, I think I remember you saying that there was uh, that there were actually power structures that were actively working against you. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly what and, I said. And that's kind of what, uh, that, that came home. And, and I think we were sharing that most folks that are, um, you know, just like the presentations we had is that we, our folks are going against power structures to kind of thrive and, it's on us to kind of be mindful when we're distributing and having those tough decisions around funding yeah. um, so we can make the most impact for our community. I wrote down um, to be uh, deeply aware of our implicit biases. Just, I feel like we can have this discussion. I could attend something like this at least once a year and you take away something new and different each time. If that felt a little bit rushed to me, but I think that's the nature of the topic, mm -hmm. you know, one evening. Yeah. And I think it, it was highlighted. I think we all have our biases, right? So mm -hmm. it's, I think that was kind of the trying to normalize that. Like we all have biases. What are some of those biases and how does that impact how we see, you know, items and being o open to having those discussions? I think that was something that got raised uh, and that, uh, Training. I'm sorry, Commissioner Rebecca, you're going to say something. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to offer an observation from someone that lost the bid for the car and had to attend virtually. <laughs> um, and that is that it felt like a really fantastic agenda, but I have rarely recently felt so left out because mm -hmm. I was um, dialing wow. in online. It, mm -hmm. And you you and I were both, and Kina, the three mm -hmm. of us, I think and I yeah. think we were all from Issa. Right, we were the only three. There, there, were, there was, I think, another individual, I can't remember what city he was from. Yeah. Oh, there were, it, a, there were it, a few others on the Yeah. 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 It's good feedback. We tried to do the best we could. Yeah, I mean, it really wasn't mm -hmm. set up to be hybrid. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and feedback. I would love to offer more feedback. I, I I didn't also I didn't receive any. The survey um, wasn't offered online. Well, we didn't, didn't get any of the and resources. Yeah, like oh, that was really for using to talk. So they didn't even have like those available. Oh, that's we didn't too have bad. Any documents. No. Oh. And, and also the like the instructions. Yes, <laughs> I know. But it was great because the next day I felt like I have a new mission in life, which is from an equity perspective to help ensure that if we're offering a hybrid <laughs> meetings, the that goal. it truly feels sure. that like everyone point. can be welcomed yes. and included yeah. and participate. Even if it's um, in segregated, you know, I would have been happy to just participate alone with the online folks. But half the time we had no idea what the instructions were for discussion. I didn't know there was this. I didn't know there was this, um, this uh, cue or whatever to talk as if you were speaking to an eight-year-old. Right. Did you know? No, that's not. I didn't oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So we were really. And for the first like ten minutes or so, somebody was sitting right in front of the camera, so you could only see the back. You couldn't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a good. It felt like a. Oh, there we are in. March 2020, but yeah. it, you know, just a good reminder for all of us. Mm -hmm. And as we can offer these meetings to be potentially hybrid, um, 
and the work we do. Thanks so much for letting us know. That's what we strongly um, made recommendations for the, first of all, for a hybrid model, because initially I think the plan was just to offer it in person. Mm -hmm. And we offered all of what you said to try to recommend and mm -hmm. provide support. And it's disappointing to hear that, but at the same time, thank you. And then another opportunity for us to, because mm -hmm. yeah, it was just the fair definition of equity. You cannot mm -hmm. expect five commissions from five different cities to be able to make it at a six o'clock appointment in person mm -hmm. uh, at this day and age, mm -hmm. right? Um, and also, yeah. it also, I've, I know that it took a while in order to confirm that they would be willing to offer it hybrid, yeah. but yeah. in situations where they really don't feel equipped or experienced yeah. for offering hybrid, yeah. I feel like it's better to just say, yeah. sorry, right. yeah. you know, we can it's on the organizing committee in two years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we can, and even this time we consider because we, you know, we always set aside money in our budget for equity training. Mm -hmm. We can also just do. It, there's there's value in doing it regionally, but there's also value if, if we need more, more quality mm -hmm. information to just do it just for the commission. And perhaps we can invite other commissions at the city, yeah. but just love that individual. Idea. Yeah. Considering that, like we consider mm -hmm. that even this year, but. That's even more information that, mm -hmm. you know, next time let's mm -hmm. yeah. let's consider something that feels more or less for everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear that and thank you for oh, letting us know. Well, so we wouldn't have felt so disappointed or um, strongly about it if it didn't appear to be such a substantive opportunity okay. to learn and discuss. Right. Yeah. yeah, when they were doing like the, the report out like in interim mm -hmm. groups, I think that was like the it was just the virtual folks were kind of on their own island. Yep. Yeah. And there was not as much coordination to say, hey, virtual folks, we're going to pair you with breakout rooms one, two, three, yeah. the report out. I think it was, they were just, you guys just in limbo land. And we were, so it did feel like there's some disconnection around that. And then when we report out, it was hard for folks to yeah. report out what they're learning. It's more like you were an audience as yeah. opposed to yes. participating. Yeah, well, yeah. and only be able to hear half of what was being right. shared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, in fact, you know, in this day and age, I think um, having, you know, I'm going to say Zoom because that's what most people use, a Zoom session with breakout rooms yeah. and everybody can hear each other. And I mean, I think something like that would be more inclusive. The tools are definitely there to make it a more effective um, opportunity, right? Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, mm -hmm. but back to the discussion i mean did you have more that you well i think i i think I, unless other folks i think there was the, the whole point was just you know looking at applications and to an equity lens and just being mindful to our biases and, and i think having sincere discussions with each other um kind of you know where do we stand uh matching it with your strategic plan and goals around each city has our own you know we have our own as well um so i think most of the reporting was of such when it comes to uh, looking at applications, so. Commissioners, with, with your permission, this is, I think, my third, maybe fourth, I don't know exactly, maybe this is my fourth cycle, um, losing count. One thing that I, over the years, I, I, over the years I learned, as speaking of biases, uh, as you all know, this is a, a wonderful community and most of you are connected to wonderful organizations locally or regionally. And so that's why we even ask for conflict of interest. But as you know, I think I want to call out that's a major bias initially, right? You're, we are all biased. You serve a community and you love that community. So we are all biased by, by the wonderful organizations that you have. So keep that in mind compared to organizations mm -hmm. that perhaps you're going to see on your list that you never heard of, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, also I think there's a bias uh, to be called out when you do have rightfully so wonderful organizations to who come and make public comments, now it, it's great. You learn more about them and all of the organizations are always welcome to do it, but not everybody makes it here. But then those who do make it here for public comment, now they have an advantage because now you know more about them. You had that in-person connection. That's very so true. even that is a, a bias. Again, not nothing against any of the organizations, but I think as you're reviewing those applications, I encourage you to keep that in mind. Right. Um, I wanted. Oh, I just, oh here comes Manny. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, Manny. Hi, Manny. Hi, Manny. Sneak in. Nice, Kathy. Introducing it. And if you're being recorded. <laughs> um, 
I can um, answer the first question. When I went through the equity training two years ago before I did my first time of grant making for human services, you know, I'm I'm a big uh, reader and, and writer. And um, I realized that just because we get an application that's not necessarily very well written doesn't mean that it's as highly worth to consider as one that's just superbly written. Mm -hmm. And that was a bias I think I had to work through, and I did, I worked through it really easily. I feel the same way sometimes when we talk about volunteer organizations versus organizations that have paid staff and a paid grant writer, and again, bring that level of maybe standard professionalism to applications versus a small organization that doesn't have those same resources available. Yeah. But that's something to be mindful of. I love hearing that, and I think on a similar note, uh, a similar thing uh, that comes to mind in terms of people's number of people serve. Sometimes when yes. you see an organization that serves 100 people compared to an organization that serves 10 or 20, we tend to feel like, oh, that's going to make a bigger impact, whereas in reality, we never know, right? So even that is something to consider depending on the type of work that they do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know if this is the right time in our meeting to ask a question. Can we believe that when somebody says they serve 100 people in Issaquah, right. that they do? Can we believe that statistic? Well, you want to assume, like, we, yeah, it's hard to go into that, right? We want to assume that everybody who is reporting numbers they're doing, but there's no way. But then you can go down the rabbit hole, right? Yeah, Duplicated, right. unduplicated. Right. I, I mean, exactly. yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I would recommend not go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Just assume the best in everyone and assume that what you have is what, what's real because otherwise we are never going to finish the grant and it's going to be hard to play detective trying to find the real numbers. And I will say a lot of organizations have other accountability measurements outside mm -hmm. of the city. Um, so I think positive intent is yeah. worth it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Are there comments? Can anybody think of another bias they might have? Or a bias? Um, in, in addition to others that have been shared, I, I think that I might be all else equal, more biased towards certain types of services than other types of services mm -hmm. in like a hierarchy model mm -hmm. of that's the most essential, you know, and other and probably for other reasons, too. But I like the way that this is structured and that they're grouped by four themes, right? So that helps ensure that there's a more even distribution. And that's why we're so fortunate to have a um, human services strategic plan. Mm -hmm. Right. Because yeah. then we might really have a bias towards something that's not even mentioned in a strategic plan. You know, I'm just, that, that's an extreme. Yeah. But, you know, so we basically need to kind of focus in on the strategic plan. Yeah. Has there been, have there been training opportunities like that before that where the different cities get together in that, in that way? Yes, historically we've tried to do that. It's just before the pandemic, they were all in person with no online options. And then during the pandemic. OK, of course. Oh, yeah. OK. Can I ask what folks have probably heard now that you experience an online version versus some of some folks here experienced the full online virtual experience, some did the hybrid recently in person. Moving forward, is commissioners do have a preference of this type of training prior to the next cycle to be all in person, hybrid, or all virtual. Um, so I I teach in person and I teach online. And I think um, it's so possible to do this online. Like it shouldn't have happened the way that you're describing. What you're describing just seems unheard of to me. There's just no way. I all I keep thinking is there was obviously not a teacher in the room who could run the Zoom. Um, but that being said, I think it's so possible and a hybrid is always the most equitable and accessible way mm -hmm. of teaching. Um, 
whether in a K through 12 classroom or higher ed or something like this. You think the hybrid is? Yeah, I think hybrid is the most accessible because, for example, I have students who don't have access to technology um, sure. for various reasons, or they might have a computer at home, but they don't know how to use it without their children. Or OK, can I put a qualifier on that? I mean, it's your opinion, but a hybrid that is set up to work well. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, what that's what you're saying. I think that's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, you need you need basically what we call an instructional designer who knows how to yeah. do this in a modality that that um, includes everybody. Yeah, and yeah. it's not rocket science. You just need somebody who's uh, trained to do it, right? And so, it was through the person who was asked to do it kept saying like I don't know how to because use they it. probably have never they've done never, it. They've never they right? yeah. If you could yeah. probably ask a K yeah. through 12 teacher who did it <laughs> over the pandemic, yeah. you just need some instructional design yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, and it's it's so doable it's so doable it sounds like if there was a last minute change so they weren't prepared with somebody who's mm -hmm. uh you know who's trained in instructional design but well commissioners yeah thank you so much for feedback and stuff i this will be brought to um the larger conversation actually a uh, very timely conversation so thank you all for your feedback and um and in two years when we're doing this again well let's have a conversation prior and figure out what's mm -hmm. best for our commission at that time Thank you all. There is a little bit of irony that, that you didn't even have a chance to fill out an evaluation. <laughs> like, I have yeah. some feedback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll follow up with that record. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's been my experience, if I can just throw one more thing in here, that just from my experience, it, uh, that either it's, uh, it's all on Zoom or it's all in person is really the most effective. Right. Um, that, that, uh, what you're talking about requires someone who has expertise, um, and you know, and I haven't seen that. Yeah. Me personally, I haven't. I've seen lots of examples where you have the camera in the room and you're watching online, and you just don't feel like you're, you're Sorry, part of uh, it. You know? <laughs> It requires it requires specific technologies like an owl, but also somebody who is there just to run the hybrid, mm -hmm. an AV person who is who also knows instructional design, who also also also. And these people do exist. So depending on the resources of the organization or the commission or whatever, um, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure organizations can find somebody to do that. Right. And I but think the expertise is key. Right. So like for me in higher education, we we like throw money at this thing. So mm -hmm. So it's usually OK. So if you're going to have a hybrid, I think that you should have it should hinge on you having somebody. Yes, like you. absolutely. Absolutely. I do not recommend DIY. <laughs> like I do not recommend trying to do hybrid yourself. You need somebody who um, knows how to design the course online, but then who also is there in the in-person area connecting the two audiences together. Yeah. Uh, and that requires expertise. But there are folks whose entire career is doing that, so you can find one. And, and one other caveat, it looked like the way it was structured in the room was to have small group discussions yes. or maybe even one on one. So the instructional design would also need to take into account yeah. that there's only one person in the room or one person online. Right. How do we ensure that they are? Um, I think they had three breakout sessions. One was with two people and the three people and I think the biggest was four. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's all part of yeah, the exactly. journey. <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for the feedback. We'll definitely pass it on and then we'll make sure that you still have a form evaluation. We have <laughs> a good <laughs> meeting tomorrow, so Ken and I are okay. prepared to provide the feedback. Myself. So thank you. <laughs> Got to go. Yeah. Okay. And again, like, like I said, we'll talk about this again later. In two years. <laughs> um, all right, now we're going to move on to the the meat of it, right? Human Services Grant Application Background and Process by Monica and then walk us through this. Thank you so much, Trish and Commissioners. Uh, thank you again. Good evening. This is Monica. I'm so, so uh, glad to be here with you again tonight. And before I start, I just want to say ahead of this big grant, uh, grant process cycle, um, a big, big, big thanks on behalf of the city. I know you're a volunteer board. You can just be out walking in the park in this beautiful summer evening that you're here and you're gearing up to a very busy season. So humble thanks. I know you don't have a small task uh, ahead of you, 
as you you're going to hear more from him on the details about a number of applications and all of those on my end tonight. I'm just going to provide a refresher for those of you who've been here before, or perhaps it might be some new information just covering the broader uh, background and application process. And then I'm going to let Hannah go into the specifics after. But big, big thanks for your commitment uh, to serving this. So humbled and honored. I just have a presentation on it. You're going to have a, a lot of work with Thank you. So uh, tonight, as, as Trish said, um, just providing a little bit of uh, background for you just to see the bigger picture of how, where does this application cycle fall into and how, how do we fit within the larger, broader regional approach. Uh, then I'm going to cover a little bit more about the, the application process and then timeline and next step. So just broad overview for you here tonight. Uh, again, as I said, Hannah's going to cover it a little, a little bit later. Um, so, um, in case, uh, just a reminder, the Human Services Commission was created in 2007, uh, so uh, quite a bit of history there. And when the Human Services Commission was created first, actually the, the intent of the commission was really to help with the uh, grant um, application process. So that was the main goal, the main scope of the commission. Um, so you as, as volunteer commissioners, your role is to make recommendations on, on the applications. Uh, you're making recommendations to the mayor and city council uh, who will then take the actual policy and budgetary decision. But you are making the specific decision. So I know the mayor and city council always appreciate your hard work. Um, uh, while they are the decision makers, they always, always respect uh, and know how much work you put into this process. So thank you for that. On the screen, you also see we just put together a little bit of a timeline on how much um, funding we provided over the years. This is just covers the last 10 years. So starting in the 2015-2016 uh, application process, we had just a little bit over $200,000 in grants to give. The next funding cycle, it went over to close to $300,000. We, we capped at 500 for two cycles in 2020 and then 2021, 22. And then this year uh, we are, oh, the last funding cycle, oh, gosh, we are in the 25th cycle. Uh, the last funding cycle, we were just a little bit over 500 and we keep increasing. So for the next funding cycle, we have a little bit over $600,000. So during last funding, during you know two years ago, we went to city council and we proposed an actual formula that automatically increases the uh, the uh, the amount of, of funds that we have available based on uh, the population growth and also based on um, on the cost of living. Um, so that's why you're going to see it's make it easier for everyone instead of just going and trying to shoot in the dark and see how much money we need and have. Uh, we just have a, a process in place that just makes it easier during budget season. So that's that. Um, so as you will know already, again, this is a refresher. Uh, this is a biennial cycle because it's so comprehensive and <laughs> so uh, so much work and so com so much complexity goes into this process. I cannot imagine this process being on annual, <laughs> on annual events. So I'm very grateful that actually it happens every two years. Um, so on one end, uh, yes, it, it, it's it's a lot of work for for the investment. But on the other end, our hope is that also it makes it easier for organizations to apply for this grant. Having a, a two year um, a funding commitment makes it easier for their services for them to be able to provide quality services and and budget for 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 their money. So I think it's a win win. Um, as we said, your recommendations are valuable. You are making the recommendations, and then council approves uh, the final uh, budget. Um, so we are part of a 16 city collaborative from North King County, East King County and South King County. Um, on the east side, we are part of uh, the five cities, um, Bellevue, Kirkland, Issaquah, Sammamish and, and uh, mm -hmm. Redmond. Um, and then there are other cities on the north and uh, south side that make up the 16 cities. Um, we use uh, one portal. You're going to hear more about the Share One app. Uh, online portal 
uh, it's, it's one uh, joint portal where all the applications are being received. Uh, this makes it easier for the nonprofit organizations that they just need to submit one applications, one application, and then they can just check the cities that they, they serve and the cities that they would like to seek funding from. So it's an attempt to make it easier for the organizations. Um, there are pros and cons for sure for that. Um, uh, in terms of, uh, from our perspective, uh, definitely we want to make it easier for the organizations. For our, from our perspective, what's sometimes a little bit more challenging is that we don't have that flexibility to, to make the application process easier or make edits and changes to the application mm -hmm. just because any edits that we propose need to be approved by 16 cities, which is much different <laughs> and much more difficult to do, especially as some, some cities are smaller cities, some other cities are larger cities and they have their own priorities. And, and so it just makes it a little bit difficult, not difficult, mm -hmm. but not impossible. I think the, the process has been working now for years and, and we continue to, to be part of that. Um, for uh, as Trish mentioned earlier, we are very fortunate. We have uh, now a human services strategic plan. Not many cities have a strategic plan which guides our funding process. So you're going to hear again more from Hannah on how she's going to group all the applications that we received. She's working on that right now and she's going to group them based on the four different uh, focus areas that we have um, in the strategic plan. So then that's going to make it a little bit easier to, to dive deeper into those applications. Um, Still part of the strategic plan, um, we uh, prioritize a local approach to services because the intent is to support the local services and also to bring services to Issaquah. So that always has been um, a priority. But then also we look also at the regional reach and see are there other organizations that still want to or Issaquah could benefit from or we are also part of the uh, the region and how can we look at that, but always prioritizing local first, right? Um, and uh, once uh, an organization is, is funded, then they're gonna submit to standard contract requirements from the city with the city. Uh, we'll tell you more as we, we go. I don't need to go into details now, but each, each uh, organization that contracts with the city needs to go through a certain process. They need to have insurance requirements. They need to have, um, a business license requirements and certain things in place to be able to contract with the city, but we work with each organization on that. So a little bit about that. I'm going to pause to see if there are any questions so far or should I keep going and maybe take questions at the end? Does this? It's good so far. OK, so I know that I, I'm not supposed to ask questions, but like, what am I supposed to do? Like, do I just <laughs> write them down and then ask you after? <laughs> You can talk. I am totally okay if you ask. And, and no, it's fine. Person. Absolutely. Because if you're thinking that somebody else might be thinking that. Okay, yeah. got it. It's just that I was told I couldn't really participate tonight, and but I'm like sitting here like shaking. Like, <laughs> 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 you're not a okay. formal commissioner yet, but you will be in, a, in oh, two weeks, so yeah, you are. We have a workaround. I'm going to write the questions and then you will ask them. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. Please, I don't think anyone, yeah. We would love to have. Yes, please. Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. So my first question is, can we see all the cities that the organizations are asking funding from? Yes, okay. absolutely. And I think you already are going to see that on the application. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And is there a question for the organizations where they discuss what their total budget is so that we can see what percentage of what they're asking us is trying to be filled? Yes. Okay. So yes, Hannah's going to cover all of that with you tonight later. Yes, uh, each organization has the budget that they actually need to up upload, and then they are going to have to show us their total budget and how much of their budget they are seeking from Issaquah in particular, and then other cities. So yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Great, great questions. That's all? For now. <laughs> so, I have all others, but, you know, we just, can you done us? Have you done, done granting yet for no, no, I, no. I left right <laughs> as like now. That's when I left the last time. I saw the hard work right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, Monica. Okay. So next, just a few words about the funding process and kind of like how we envision that. Again, you already know. We started with the community needs that inform the strategic plan and that those led to creating the funding priorities, right? And then the grant applications um, um, are the ones that we are using those funding priorities to, to review the grant applications, making the recommendations and having the city 
uh, council approval. And so it's just um, kind of like a full circle coming back uh, that each, even just two years ago, each two years, we will go back to identify the community needs and, and make sure that the community needs that we have in the strategic plan still stand. So that's that. Uh, just a few things on the timeline for us and uh, the over the, the grant cycle uh, process and especially for like the two year process, right? So in the first quarter of uh, 2024, we started with reviewing the strategic plan. We opened then the, the grant uh, uh, cycle process. Now in the second quarter, you're starting to review in the third quarter of the year, you're going to make recommendations to city council. In the fourth quarter, typically in November, um, so again, just telling you also months, our hope is that in August, you're going to have your recommendations finalized. So they're going to be submitted with the mayor's budget in September to city council. Then city council does budget deliberations, usually September, October, and the hope is that they are adopting the budget in November. And then, so that's why it's a full year uh, process. Um, and then uh, as in November, typically once the, the budget adopts the budget, that's when our work starts. We start letting the organizations know that they uh, receive funding and we start the contracting process. That usually takes about three, four months. So the whole first quarter uh, of 2025, Hina's gonna be busy uh, entering into contracts with the organizations. And then the whole year next year, um, it's going to be a desktop monitoring and in-person monitoring the organizations um, from the previous year. So it's always like a two-year cycle, but one year it's always a grant review funding and the next year it's always a lot of monitoring. We do ongoing monitoring, desktop monitoring uh, on a quarterly basis, but in-person monitoring of 50, 60 organizations also takes quite a bit of time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> Is there ever any support? <laughs> did you have some? Uh, okay. Um, is there ever anybody that doesn't make it through the contracting process? Um, trying to remember it's the last year. We didn't have anybody who didn't make it. I do have an organization in mind that actually took six, seven months to make it through that contracting process uh, because perhaps they didn't have things in place to get an insurance or business license. They need a lot of handholding or maybe they just missed. So we didn't have anyone not making it, but because we worked with them and trying to make it happen. But yeah, we had one one case there, remember, that took a long time too. So does that mean they are funded, uh, that there's funding money left over at the end? or? Oh. Good question. So typically what we try to do, because that funding was allocated to them, we are going to try to work with them to make sure that if they provided the service, because often they provide the service, but they don't have, sure. the, you know, like in this case, I think they didn't have board member who needed to access the portal to, to do the business license and all of those things. So if they provide the service and they provide the report to us, then we make sure that we back pay them, right, for the service that they did. Um, Every once in a while, there might be, um, you know, overall in the two year cycle, there might be some money left over because maybe an organization did not fully meet all the goals. Typically, it's pretty it's 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 small amount of money that's left and that goes back into the general fund. OK, um, that was my so, second yeah. question. Mm -hmm. so what yeah. happens to that? It goes back into the general fund. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you and you're welcome. Um, OK. Just a couple of uh, words here about your role as commissioners, right? Review the applications within your assigned category. Hannah's going to talk to you a little bit about that again in just a few minutes. You're going to use the scorecard to review the tools, and uh, we are going to talk about that as well. Uh, and deliberate in your small groups, and then you're going to come together as a larger group to deliberate and share where you are, are as a group. And then finally, make recommendations to the mayor and city council. So we'll work with you step by step. Um, every month, you're going to have a new uh, a stepping stone, a new uh, uh, in the next few months um, uh, as you're going to start initially in your first groups, larger group and final recommendations. But um, we are excited and we'll work together on figuring things out. Um, so in terms of how to approach the review process. You already had such a great discussion about applying the equity lens and uh, uh, identifying your unconscious bias. So always start with that, number one. 
Um, we were going to encourage you there. Uh, quite a few things Hannah's going to share from the strategic plan and how to make meaningful investments in the community and how to use that guide and think about um, how how um, we can make with the with the money that we have, how can we make an impact, a positive impact in the Issaquah community, right? And positive in, in impact doesn't always mean bigger and better, right? It's also just looking that that's why we chose even that word was meaningful uh, investment. Um, and then um, again, I mentioned this already, but first you're gonna work in your small groups. You're gonna come back as a larger group and share with the larger group what your small group decided. And then you're gonna have final discussions and reviewing your larger groups. Um, so that means uh, without, I'm gonna try to go a little bit into the, the weeds on this. Um, but what this means is um, you're going to have access to all of the applications. Um, you're not going to be required to read all the applications. As of tonight, we have 98 applications. That's not required of you to do it. You're going to have access to them, but you're going to be assigned most likely about 20 applications, maybe 30, depending on how we work things out. Um, and so that's why our recommendation is to trust each other that. Your peers in the other groups did a really diligent job in really reviewing all the applications. They worked really hard in making the decisions and the recommendations. So then we, when you do come together as a group, absolutely do ask questions, um, but also trust one another. Um, unless you want to review all of them. And again, you can unless you have a conflict of interest. Um, but it's a lot to ask from a volunteer board to review 9998 applications. <laughs> Questions on that? Does that make sense on our recommendations? <laughs> so this is. Oh. Yeah, I found last time we did it was that um, it was good to have those other applications on hand so yes. you could see that. Well, they're asking for X percent here, but they're asking for you know, another percent here. The same uh, grant, right? Yeah. So it was. Yeah. So it's helpful to have access to them, right? But you don't have to read them all and just take a decision every single one of them, right? Um, okay, another timeline here for you. This is more going into the weeds on a monthly basis. So we are, uh, we passed on March 25th, um, we, when you had the training. We are on this, uh, April 17, where we are starting the review process. At the next meeting uh, in May, uh, Hannah's gonna do a check-in with you on the grant application, basically uh, asking you if you're able to access the application, have you read at least one or two applications just to get an idea of what questions you might have. That's gonna be your homework between now and next time, by the way, uh, just to make sure that you can access them, you can read them, you understand kind of like how it works. So you're not diving deep until after May 15. Where, uh, where So in June, we are not gonna have a regular meeting, you're just gonna work in your small groups um, with Hannah, uh, the same you're going to continue in July. And then hopefully, if we are ready, we'll come back to the July 17 meeting as a commission to just do report out if you're going to be ready for that. If you're not going to be ready for that, we'll identify a special meeting or we are just going to do it in August. Sometimes, I, if I remember correctly, we might we could also just have two meetings in August. But again, there's a lot of variables, and so we appreciate the flexibility. We also want to work with you because July, August are also vacation times. And so, um, so there's going to be a little bit of juggling. So we appreciate your flexibility, and we are going to try to work with you on that as well. Um, and then ideally, the, the goal is to have the final report uh, for the mayor on August 21st. That's the, the meeting scheduled right now. And that's going to be our goal at the end of that meeting, finalize the recommendation. Would we have our groups in May? You will have the groups in May. Yes. Assigned. Yes, you're going to have uh -huh. them in May. And maybe even sooner than that, Hannah's going to start a conversation tonight and she might be able, if we are going to be able before the meeting in May, but we are going to make it official at the meeting in May for sure. Yeah. Right now, we still have a lot of folks who have conflict of interest. We need to figure out where do we put everyone. We still are putting the different uh, uh, applications in different groups. So, there's still a lot of, uh, it feels a little bit like a shifting sand still. <laughs> <I'm> excited. <laughs> yes. Did I scare you? <laughs> Good. Okay, I'll let Hannah scare you. Um, so again, as I mentioned, yes, yeah, so next steps for you, 
Hannah is going to walk you through how to access your applications in the portal on the Share One app and then review at least one or two applications using the scorecard. Again, this is going to be your just test drive, right? You're not going to have to assign anything, just use it as a test. Um, and I think that concludes my presentation, my portion for tonight. Commissioners, questions for me? How are you feeling? How are you doing? Excited, scared? Good to get started. Ready? <laughs> Nothing to be scared. There you go. That's I love Nothing to be scared. Yeah. I mean, there were so many of us. It was our first time in the grant review process. I mean, I think all of the, I mean, for those that have already done it once, it was our first time last year, right? Or my years. first time. Was yeah, it was my time? first time. Yeah. So, yeah, you are veterans. Thank Madeline you. was also uh, here. Jaime, you were also here. Yeah. So I think the only ones, Lucretia, um, uh, Rucker, and Hina. And Hina. Hina. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we. I mean, we. It's not like we have somebody here that's done it five times or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yeah. Manny has. A... It's your third, right? What's that? Third. I think it's my third. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, so you're the most tenured here. I know, man. What about you, Trent? No? This, this is one of the Oh, yeah, because the other commission's not I would just I would just come to the Human Services Commission meetings just to come. But I didn't, I wasn't a member, so that might be what you're thinking of. Yeah. Okay, so Manny might be had done it for. So we're going to look at you. <laughs> all right, commissioners, are you okay if I keep us moving yes, forward? Yes, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, um, good evening. Hannah Roberts here. Very, very excited to go over the 2025-2026 Human Services Grant. Um, really, my goal for tonight is to get a little more in the detail. I, I want to talk about our um, application summary. What do we have? What are we working with? Um, also, get you kind of geared up and orientated on what's the review process going to look like and what kind of tools do we have? And then um, finally, we'll talk about more of the group assignments that we so numbers and numbers, very exciting. We received 99 applications. Uh, Monica mentioned 98 as such one application was not fully submitted or it was by accident. I was able to confirm that from a commissioner or for, excuse me, from the organization. So we had 98 applications um, from 62 organizations now. So that's an update with over $2.1 million in requests. Now, I just kind of want to orientate you a little bit of what was last cycle looked like. We received 81 applications, so there's definitely an increase. Um, the funding request last cycle was uh, over 1.3 million, um, so quite an increase of funding request. Um, and to break it down of how much money do we have to offer for this cycle, as Monica mentioned, we have um, we are using our calculations here that will that establishes the amounts. The total amount is per year. So you can see in 2025 and 2026, two different amounts um, to uh, show the per capita rate and the in inflation and growth in Issaquah. And so we thought it would be much easier for you all if we just averaged it. Mm -hmm. It would be a very difficult task if you had to decide each year how much. So we're going to um, work with this number here, $612,618. Really fun number to say and type. <laughs> so that will be the, the golden number there. And when we are reviewing um, the 99, 98 applications that we have, um, the tools that we have here are, of course, the applications. And so we you're going to have an access to the Share One app. Um, this also has some tools that you can use in it. But I'm also going to set you up for a SharePoint, which is basically a, a link that can give you access to all the applications in a PDF format. If anybody needs accommodations, you certainly um, can ask for paper. But highly do not recommend it, though. <laughs> uh, the other tool, I'll go in a little more detail here, is um, like we have, I've, I've been so thankful of the amount of times I've heard you all say, our human services strategic plan, because that is um, a lot of our, the work that we do, and we're guided by that, and that will be a big tool to use in our um, funding review process. And then we have our review card that we'll also look at a little bit closer tonight. 
Um, so like I mentioned, we'll have that portal, you'll have the SharePoint PDF access, and then just let me know if anybody needs accommodations for paper. And in these grant applications, you'll see there's a lot of information that you're you are going to get. Their contact information. Um, you're going to have information about their programs, um, what kind of impact they're having, their accessibility. Um, there's information like these required documents uh, that is something that is like the, their budget, their business license, their insurance. Now, this is all they know as a requirement to be able to be in contract with us. I'm going to encourage you commissioners to really focus in on that program description, on the target audience, on, um, on the descriptions that they spent a lot of time writing. And this, as I've been reviewing these applications, I have been very impressed with the intentionality from these organizations of explaining uh, who are they serving, what are they doing, providing lots of great data and um, information. So. Um, it's a lot of information that you have to cipher through. Um, I am finding some of that information. Um, again, these organizations are very intentional this cycle. And I have a quick question. Yeah. On the grant applications you have here, the required documents. Mm -hmm. So if, if someone submitted an application where they didn't have all this, would we still get to see that application with the assumption that they're going to cross their T's and dot their I's at some point? Absolutely. Okay. And that's what Hannah's doing now. She's reviewing, okay. going through everything to review that one they met or organizations met the minimum requirements that we had laid okay. out and then just working to see if there's any missing information so we can. OK, update. thank you. Yeah. So the other piece that uh, I want to focus in on here is our human services strategic plan. Um, and so what we have here is our strategic plan really comes from, you saw our community needs. We did a community needs assessment back in 2021 that really guided our focus priority areas. Um, in 2023, end of 2023, seeping into 2024, we also did kind of a review check. We did focus groups really with the intentionality of, hey, life can change. Let's, uh, let's make sure that our strategic plan is still on target prior to um, reviewing these applications. And so we we reported to you all that our findings really were aligned with our strategic plan. Um, and so we feel very, um, po very positive that our strategic plan is that roadmap for these funding decisions. Now, this is a very long document. <laughs> I do not expect any of you to necessarily read it from front to back. Um, so what I have created for you all is a more digestible um, summary of the strategic plan. So in the agenda packet, um, and you'll be receiving a copy of this as well separately, uh, but in the agenda packet, you'll see that I was able to basically take information from the strategic plan that really summarized each uh, focus group. So my hope, this is a new tool for you all for this cycle. My hope is that it will help orientate commissioners to, okay, what does community, community resource mean? What does that mean in terms of our strategic plan. Who are we trying to serve in our strategic plan? What is our strategic actions and goals that we have set forward? Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I, I imagine our unconscious bias is, is easy to go in and say, oh, I like this organization. Oh, I like this. But is it aligned with our strategic plan? So throughout this process in our small groups, I'm always going to be pointing us back to our strategic plan. You'll hear that a lot. Is there somewhere where we can give feedback to the organizations that we do not choose to help them in the future? That's really a great um, thought. And when we're going through our applications, I'm always making notes of why we did not choose applications. And you'll see in our tool, we have a tool of basically saying, OK, this is why we're saying no because of X, Y and Z. Um, and so that is I've always documented um, and it is. Uh, I'm always open to talking to organizations about that. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's always good documentation practice to just also, you know, uh, every time, uh, because we might have, you know, maybe six months down the line, we might have a public uh, a request uh, for information. So it's always a good practice to document why you're funding an organization and why you're deciding not to fund an organization. So among the many Excel spreadsheets, you're going to have a column there to document. So. That's going to be very helpful. Hmm. Yeah. And that is shared with the organization? Not intentionally. It's not the current practice. Um, okay. Unless they want to, or if you as commission decide that you want us to, we can. Yeah. But they have all these to feed them too. We, we keep it as a record, 
And if the organization wants to, we can share it. Or if you as a commission say, hey, we really want that, we would be happy to do it. Because, I mean, I know in the past, I mean, an organization that didn't get funded might come and ask us and be upset. Yes. And then these guys have to deal with it. Yeah. And so they will look at the notes. Yeah. And at that point, you guys might share yeah. more information with them. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. I, don't I guess like where I'm coming from is that I'm thinking of organizations that are on the cusp of being funded because they are meeting need. They are, you know, checking two of the three boxes or however many boxes, but that didn't, for whatever reason, provide us with enough information to actually be funded, right? Yeah. Um, I guess that's what I'm, yeah. where I'm coming from. Yeah. And certainly, as we go through the funding process, if that's a preference, as you as an entire commission for us to intentionally go back and do it, we do it. Otherwise, we just leave it up to organizations who come. You know, when when we send them out, it's just a table that goes out to all of them saying, these are the organizations that received funding, how much funding, and these are the organizations who didn't. And then it's up to the organizations to get in touch with us to say, hey, can I get more information on why I didn't? And that's when we would share. But we can certainly reconsider the approach. And Excellent. Okay, so now the other tool that we have in reviewing is our review card. Um, this is similar to what we used um, uh, last cycle with a few edits. So I do have it printed in your packet um, for reference, but really um, the idea is um, to have three different buckets when you're reviewing applications. And we found this to be kind of, we've tried different cycles, we've heard different uh, feedback of what worked, and we received great feedback of this this process is simple, but it really is effective. Um, where we are reviewing these applications, where we have the the green is yes, it makes sense, it checks all the box. The the orange, yellow, I haven't decided what color that is. <laughs> <laughs> this one is we are looking at uh, we are looking at hey this. I think they they might re meet the requirements. I'm not sure. I really like to talk to some other commissioners and talk it through and decide if maybe they need to go in the green bucket or the red bucket of fund or not fund. And then the red really is this this is not quite working for funding. Now the um, the review tool card. Um, I basically just added a few more um, rows that really help orientate you to the strategic plan. Um, so it lasts cycle, it basically said, hey, is it in one of the uh, focus area buckets? And that's pretty much it. Um, and so I was able to kind of break it down a little bit more and say, hey, d within a strategic plan, is it aligned with this way? So part of your homework assignment between now and next one is to review uh, the summary, human services strategic summary, as well as the review card and, um, and provide any feedback or questions from there. Um, and so the process that we have worked for us is kind of a twofold review. First review is kind of we color code them, fund, discussion, orange, or red. I don't think that makes sense for us to fund this organization or this program. Um, and then we have the small group discussions where we go into more depth. And then once we have decided, okay, these are our organizations that we would like to fund, then we look at the money. We look at the numbers and we break that down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are our tools that we have. Um, again, really hoping to set you all up for success in reviewing these applications so you don't feel like you're alone uh, and that there's some guidance there. Um, like Monica said, we have found um, 98 applications is a lot for you to, for a volunteer board to review. Um, I will say some cities do that, um, but we have found it to break it out. So we are still reviewing um, and categorizing the all the applications. I, I really did want to have it uh, prepared for this meeting, but I realized I want to be very intentional about how I categorize these organizations and uh, make sure that it is uh, that I am setting you all up for success. So I appreciate your patience on that. Um, we will have that review by, by May 15th, if not sooner. Um, when we are doing those review groups, I've already had um, conversations about conflict of interest, but if there's anything else that comes up as you're looking at the list, you're finding there's a conflict of interest, please let me know so that way you can be removed from that subgroup. Um, and then I also want to take this opportunity. I have not defined groups. Again, we're still figuring out the best way to approach this uh, review group. I want to just do a quick kind of raise of hand. Um, you can, I put up here for, for reference, if you forgot, our strategic focus areas. Um, if, 
I'd like to hear uh, your commissioners, your first choice for your review group. Um, and then as well as your second choice, I can't guarantee you you'll get in any of them, but I would love to be able to open that up as an option. Um, so take a sec, look at it. I thought, Go for it. I thought we weren't doing the cultural one. We're, we are making a, we're, that's the part of that we're making a decision based off the numbers. So we'll, so I included it in just in case. I have just one question sure. before this. I was just wondering if you could speak to the fact, so you said there's more applications this year, mm -hmm. about 10% more maybe? Yeah. Does that represent? Close to 20%. More. Really? And can you speak to that at all? Like what you've seen about, I mean, is, are there, does this represent more organizations or just more programs within the same organizations that we've looked at before, a little bit of both? Um, yeah, I mean, in the summary um, list, there's actually quite a few new organizations mm -hmm. that we have not mm -hmm. seen before. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, and then a lot of similar ones, um, a, a few organizations that are currently funded that did not apply for ISAPLA. Um, but, um, mm. but yeah. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. And commissioners, while we're talking about the summary, I'm going to kind of pause on this um, if you don't mind, I'm going to pause this on the group assignments. Um, I did want to bring you to you um, kind of a, a request and, and kind of get your okay on something. We actually had three, so we had 99 applications. One of them um, was an accident check mark. They did not submit anything. It was just a check mark. So we had 90, 98 technically applications, of which three did not require Re meet requirement for the amount requested. So in our supplemental, we said um, we require a $5,000 minimum request um, for our annual request. Uh, three organizations requested under that. Uh, what would I like to do with your permission, commissioners, is I would like to go to these organizations and let them know we have a minimum requirement, which you either one like to increase your request to the minimum re requirement, and if not, then you will not meet those requirements and your application will not be reviewed. Um, commissioners, are, with your permission, are you okay if I offer that to those three organizations to increase their funding request, or would you like a discussion? No, that's just having them say, yes, we want to increase our uh, amount, yes. not necessarily that they're accepted or Yes, yes. Thanks for clarifying. Absolutely, yes. And our minimum requirement is $5,000 to be considered. Justifiable. Yes. $5,000, yes. right? Yes. It's not just, just like, yeah, exactly. Yes. $500 yes. to $5,000, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that also the minimum of what we're supposed to split them? Sorry, uh, is that saying? the minimum for that we offer them? For, oh, I see what you're saying. So for pro contract. I, yeah, I'd say, well, we're going to give them $3,000. No, we cannot give them the yeah. thousand. So we wouldn't do an award to any organization that's less than five. Minimal yes. request is the minimum. Five per year. Per year. And, and the intention behind that really is it's a lot of work doing contract work and doing the reporting on, on our end as well as the organization's end. Mm -hmm. um, this is an increase from last um, cycle was $4,000, but I think it reflects um, reflects the funding cost. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's why. Yeah, question. What if increasing to 5,000 requires editing the submitted application? Yeah. Um, they, they would not have the option to edit their application. The only thing would be we would increase the dollar amount. Okay. Um, and so that, then the review group might find, oh, this doesn't mm -hmm. align. So the right. review group will most likely on like the portal because they can't go back in and touch the portal. They will see what they requested, originally requested. Mm -hmm. um, but knowing that they are now requesting the minimum amount of 5000 We can put a note and an explanation mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you could take into consideration, but they're not going to be allowed to change the application, right? But we can have them explain, you know, and have a reasoning why they increased the amount. This is really a like if we if we go I'm gonna step back for a minute if we go very black and white we could from the very beginning just say they did not meet the requirement mm -hmm. and just just the eliminate the requirement them. right right exactly so we could eliminate mm -hmm. them but again trying to be um, more supportive of the organizations knowing that they worked really hard mm -hmm. like there's one of them that they submitted for four thousand and eight hundred and forty dollars so mm -hmm. they are a hundred and $60 short. 
um, that I think, again, because of the work and we want to be supportive of organizations and not mm -hmm. punitive, we would like to extend that uh, and, and, and offer that to them. So I think Monica and Hannah are asking us if we can support that. Right. I can, I can support it. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned one that was really close. Mm -hmm. The other two, are they also really close? They're about yeah. so 25. Okay. Well, so well, they didn't even meet the 4,000 requirement from last year. Okay, they must be new people. Okay. But so that's right, especially if they're new people. Yeah. We also want to look if there are new organizations, smaller yeah. organizations. We want to understand at least, have a conversation with them and say, maybe they're going to tell us and say, we just don't believe we can spend $5,000. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then let's see what we can do. But at least... We saw that for the work that they put in and sure. they, and they wanted to expand services, it's it's worth at least having that conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Some Did of them might support. Um, consensus is fine. Yeah, okay. it doesn't have to be. We wouldn't want to hear if somebody feels strongly about not doing it, but. I wouldn't feel comfortable if it is also, if they are allowed to supplement. Right. With. An edit, even if it's a, I'm attaching a separate explanation as to okay. how we distribute that. Or at this moment, I wouldn't feel comfortable with that because I feel like, gosh, the other organizations also worked hard and got in by the deadline, perhaps complying with all of the mm -hmm. stated requirements. So to me, that feels did you say that was an option? I didn't catch that. That you might ask for a supplement if they say yeah. I said that not for a supplement, but we could put a, an explanation on our end for you commissioners to have if there's an explanation in addition to, let's say, for the two organizations that have $2,500 and they're going to put it for $5,000. Now, you, when you're going to go to the application, maybe that's going to be a big difference. So we could put an explanation, but we are totally okay not putting any explanation and just having the numbers. Oh, well, it's a consideration. For, that's a yeah, sharing of. Yes. No, yeah. that that's good. Those good, yeah, good, good, good thoughts for sure. So we will know, like with those twenty five hundreds, we will know that they originally came in at twenty five hundred, and they said, "Sure, put me up at five. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It'll be yeah. clear. Yeah, you're gonna be able to. Yeah. And it's also that we may not see them if they decide not to. Right. Yes. Right. Exactly. Well, who um, supports the idea of going back and asking these um, three applicants if they want to be Boosted up to five. Who wants to put up? And it's and don't be bashful. Okay. It looks like um, the majority. Great. And then I would just say, like, I would expect that 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 kindness would be extended in cycles going forward. Yeah, we yeah, did that actually the previous cycle. Oh, yes, helpful. Yes, that's yes, helpful. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's why I was like, <laughs> like oh, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, this happened before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so appreciate it. And then before when it happened, it was the same, I think, two or three organizations. And we had both one where the organization decided to back yeah. out and then we decided to. Yeah. to so I'll, I'll have those conversations with those organizations and by May 15th, we'll update those numbers mm -hmm. accordingly. So thank you for your patience on that. You guys already know this entry, but Bellevue went to a minimum of 10 grand. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. From what? To, from they, what? Went, they were at five. Five yeah. to 10. Yeah. It's it's a tough decision to make, especially yeah. as we are also trying to focus on equity. And if you, there are smaller organizations who might just need uh, seed, seed money mm -hmm. to start up, um, it's 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 a challenging one. We wrestle with mm -hmm. it. Similar budget is much more different, robust. Right. 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 Oh yeah, Bellevue, yes. But yeah, they're also a city that's four times as <laughs> as larger than New York. So. so I have a question, and I think this is the place to ask it. The question is, when you do the legwork, Hannah, to categorize the applicants into the different pots. Mm -hmm. Is that not something that the organization could do for themselves so that you're yeah. not having to make that decision? Yeah, some organizations we've had those conversations it's, or it's very clearly stated on um, the application, but we're on a share one app 16 collaborative application. So our funding priority areas can't be placed on the application for them to mm. choose on that because it's different than Bellevue or Renton, for example. Um, and so um so that's that's something that um but isn't that something that could be added right like for Issaquah if you're applying for Issaquah answer the check 
which one you want. But then would they have to do that for all 16 yeah. cities? And just, well, I mean, but eventually, right? I mean, I mean, it doesn't take that much to add a small <laughs> section and yeah. have, right? I mean, a programmer can do that in five minutes. In theory, it sounds like you <laughs> feel the same, and yeah. it sounds like we that. should be in a day and age when you can do it. But um, two barriers to that: one, the decision making process, and two, that's probably sometimes even a bigger barrier. We use the same portal. For, we have been using it for several years. That provides low cost, and mm -hmm. then doing the um, the IT, the technology part to to change the portal. It's it requires a lot of money and a lot of time that that it makes it difficult mm -hmm. to put because it's mm -hmm. it's basically the software that needs to be changed to add any new questions and that's sometimes the biggest barrier even if and that does that get reviewed every five years ten two twenty what are we talking um, about I think we reviewed it last uh, last cycle this cycle we didn't make changes um, this cycle we were. We review. Are you talking about the application um, mm -hmm. questions? Yeah. yeah, we we just actually updated the application yeah, and, um, yeah. this for this cycle, and I think so. I think each cycle gets like, a little bit, a little yeah. bit, but nothing like major. Just like little yeah. updates here and there um, to align with some of the work that's being done regionally. But um, one thing we can discuss um, for next cycle is requesting. I, pros and cons to this, and this will be a good discussion, is do we require organizations to provide, I guess, supplemental, like additional answer? Please answer this question. Some cities do. Um, so you're basically asking them, them to do the application and then add an extra, basically, document that says it's a more specific information. Mm -hmm. uh, and so again, pros and cons to that. This cycle, we did not set it up for that way, um, but we can discuss if that's something that you find. Let's see how this cycle goes, and then I think we'll kind of do a recap um, come September when this is all over. And I think that's something for us to relook at and see, oh, this would have been very helpful to add mm -hmm. in this process. Or actually, there's plenty of information there. We are okay. So I'm, I'm trying to be conscious of your time. Thank you. Um, do you need a lot more? I do not. I just have a raised hand uh, practice thing. Yes. Yeah, I was just thinking that um, with that information, mm -hmm. this is cities too. I mean, um, whether it's specific for Issaquah or not. Let's say you said, well, you know, are they in the community or yeah. housing? Yeah. yeah. So, so did you want people maybe to email you their one and twos or to tell you to tonight? Um, I think we can do this real quick. Yeah. <laughs> With raise hands. All right. So I'm going to go through each one. This one, raise your hand if this one is your first choice. Um, and then we'll go again and you'll raise your hand for your second choice. Any questions before we do our raise your hands? And be aware of your conflicts of interest. And we'll follow up via email too, but just trying to do a quick poll. Right? What, what if you're willing to like go where you're needed? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great. Wonderful. So that will be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. Okay, so we have record. So let's raise our hand first if you you really truly, I mean, truly don't have a preference and you'll go. Because I'm sure everybody's willing to go anywhere it's needed, right? Mm -hmm. But if you really don't have a preference, please raise your hand. And we do in ones and twos or just uh, we vote twice or? Uh, <laughs> we're going to vote twice. Yeah. For first, yeah, well, your first, first preference, okay. we'll, we'll raise our hand. Okay. And then your second, second. preference. And then no preference. The record mail and don't need to raise your hands. Yes, That's right. Easy mm -hmm. for them. Um, and oh, okay, great. So for your, if, if your first so choice is physical and behavioral mm -hmm. health, please raise your hand. Okay, mm -hmm. Housing continuum for your first one. It's interesting. Okay. Cultural specific and language access. Mm -hmm. This is for number one, right? Um, number yes. one, and then community resources. Okay. Oh, interesting. <laughs> what <laughs> <are> you guys <laughs> 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 I have a history. <laughs> 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 I was not letting to do that, but I could do it. So, well, I don't need to do it. I know you really don't. Okay, second preference. Um, hi, Maine. Um, what's your second preference? Uh, cultural specific language. I'm sorry. All right. And then did you raise your hand? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm pressing that. Can you have a I'm question? not clear what it, that's fine. You have a I'll, I'll we can read. I'm really flexible. I'll go wherever I'm needed. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, and then Maury, what's your second preferred? Housing continuum. Okay. And Manny, what's your second? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys. Uh, and then Keena. Keena's going behavioral. And okay. I will check in with Keena and see where she's at. So, okay, well. Wait, wait my second. No. Trish, I'm so sorry, but you don't have a second. I thought, I thought culture specific. I don't have a conflict there. Um, You are right. You're right, <laughs> Adam, because I was thinking about the three. Yeah. Thank you so and much. And Hannah, will you tell us what our conflict of interest is? or we'll If you're on the board it. or if you're a volunteer. I know, but. What's up? Uh, which one's. With something in. I'm wondering. Or like it's about food and clothing bank if you volunteer yeah, there or if yeah. you work with yeah. the circle or those kind yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The ones that have the ones that's on the list. Yeah. <laughs> so, perfect. So well, I might need to sit out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I found one for you. You're okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know. So Camilla so, so, has been doing a lot of magic work to put people like, okay, yeah. I cannot put you here. Like it's it's a puzzle. <laughs> it's, it's a huge puzzle. So and again, we are I, I really want to be intentional about how we approach this to help you all be the most successful, but also make our organizations be the most successful and receive the the funding that they really need. So mm -hmm. thank you for your patience. I will we'll have more work on that. What's up, Manny? <laughs> I was looking if it was spread out. I changed my mind. Did you change it? Oh. <laughs> Nanny. Right, so this is my last slide here, folks. So we've kind of been talking about this. So no surprise here, but um, you will get this all in email. So don't feel like you have to remember this. I will follow up with you on um, uh, accessing the portal. So please log into that. Make sure that you can access it, review it, see if you, it makes sense. Next, check out the SharePoint to make sure you can also access a couple of PDFs, open a few to make sure they're there and you can see them. Um, also, please spend a little time in those review cards. Um, look at our strategic plan. Look at the summary to make it easier. Um, look at the, the tool card. Any questions um, that you have, please bring them on our May um, commission meeting. Um, and then please also open up an application and review it. You don't have to score it. I just want you to kind of go through it. See what kind of information. Do just the practice of okay. If I was looking at this, do it. Does it make sense? Can I can I fill out this review card? Um, so feel free to do a practice one if you'd like. But um, that is really the intention: is making sure everyone has access. And if not, or there's questions, that's what our May 15th meeting will be. Is there somewhere on these applications to make notes, or um, do, they, do we need to figure out our own way to make? The notes you can you'll get a form for the uh, grant card. That's where there is. So here, like this is our review card. Got it. Um, and there's okay. notes there, or on the portal, there's actually it should be set up where you could put okay. notes there as well. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want you all to get a look at, and so you're not confused and you are diving deep into it. Yeah, when you put it on the portal, um, anybody will be able to see it from. Is that correct? Like I could look at an area that I am not working on mm -hmm. and see it. Yeah, you have access and permission to please look to at all of them. Oh, to um, I don't think I think you can only look at your notes. I don't think you can look at other missionary no from what I remember. No, Google Doc. Not a Google Doc, no. Okay. All righty, that's it. Okay, so we're ready. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're going a little bit over, but we hit. So much to go over here. Okay, chair and commissioner reports. Um, I don't have anything to say. Does anybody have anything to say? Anything they want to tell other people about? You usually have something. I, oh, I recently completed the CERT training, which is the community emergency response oh, training. Yeah, here in Issa. Right. I'm um, CERT. And I have, oh, you, of course you are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I have um, thoughts about that, but I won't share them. I won't share them. Love to hear this. Uh, <laughs> you going to think it's very relevant. Um, it's it's actually now officially completed yeah. as of um, very recently. Yeah. Do people know what that is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think there's do you know what it is, Preston? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Yeah. Parker, why don't you just do a quick? It stands for Community Emergency Response Training, and it is based on FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency's curriculum for what communities can do if a disaster hits, how they can mobilize, how volunteer citizens, residents within the community can mobilize themselves to be 
kind of first responders um, in support with with established you know local agencies. But there's I thought there was a lot of room and opportunity there for additional connections to the larger community, to incorporating a welcoming oh, yeah. larger community. It's a great organization. It's a great organization. I thought there's um, some gaps and opportunities that and and some great model for it's also a great model for um, you know, maybe we can have a discussion. Okay, I'd be happy to put some stuff on the agenda for our May meeting. We'll have we should have time for that. Okay. So for that. Yeah. More, more yeah. Conversation. Yeah. So thank Great. you. And if helpful, we can also invite our emergency manager, Jared, oh, to, if that great. would be yeah. helpful. If you would like that, it's up to that's you. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yep. Does he, he work closely almost. with the serve team? Yeah. I would imagine. Yeah, he's our emergency manager at the city. So oh, okay. my, especially if you have feedback or if you have discussion, we could consider inviting and interesting. Maybe I can um just have a quick chat with you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we can just yeah, let's connect and so I have something. Um this weekend I believe is um Earth Day mm -hmm. celebrations. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to encourage and remind everyone that the city is sponsoring several things where we can, you know, contribute some time. Um, I really believe that um, incorporating those sorts of activities with our children leads them to understand the importance of civic life. And so if you have children, grandchildren, adopted, you know, neighborhood children, whatever, um, please, I encourage you to come on out and also bring the youth out because that's how they, they become engaged. I guess I went to this, I, I guess I do have something to add. I went to the sustainability fair a couple weekends ago. In fact, I sat at a booth and um, I don't know if anybody else went there, but um, it was the second one and it was highly successful. And um, I'm sure we'll have them again and again. Yeah. I have something also. Uh, the Duwamish Longhouse mm -hmm. down on the West Marginal Way is having a couple of fellows uh, that were representing our area. Um, at the Dubai uh, conference that just happened. And they're going to talk about uh, what their impressions were of what happened there. Oh, wow. Cool. That'll be Saturday. In, at the Longhouse? At the Duwamish Longhouse. Hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, Preston. Yay, I am the youth. <laughs> 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 okay, so on a point, point for YAV, so recent events, we're also going into our new period where we're going to be electing our new leaders. It's going to be a similar one. We're going to be adding a new position of community outreach or more internal affairs officer, which is going to be helping make sure that we have um, more opportunities as a board and for the entire community to have more service opportunities for youth to get um, more service hours and just be able to interact more with the community. And on the second point of our events, we tried, um, since we're reaching the end of the year and as a technically like a group of school children, we don't do meetings over the summer. Mm -hmm. So we are reaching kind of like the end of this year basically. So we can't plan any big, very like giant events, but we wanted to make sure that we had um, three events over both teen action and teen advocacy that were able to address the needs of basically all the children or all the youth in the area. So we have one event, um, aimed at elementary schoolers, one event aimed specifically at middle schoolers, and then one in the more like teen middle school or high school area. So for our elementary school event, we have Arts in the Parks, and that's going to be held at Confluence Park at the end of May, I'm pretty sure. And basically it's just going to be a, um, base, a fun little celebration for all the elementary schoolers. We're just gonna um, rent out one of the picnic houses areas over there and then just do some art activities basically. And then just like celebrate, basically just like letting the parents of the kids and the kids meet each other right before the school ends to get like contacts over the summer. And then for the middle school event, we have our middle school dodgeball event, and that's going to be coming up in like about a couple weeks, I'm pretty sure. And that's just another community building event for all of the middle schoolers. And then 
our we have for our middle school high school each event we have um our first time event for the Izzy hackathon and that's going to also be near the end of may and that's basically where we're going to have a couple speakers talk about um things like website designing for um middle schoolers and high schoolers and then we're going to have a quick like coding competition and then there'll be a couple prizes for students where they're basically like taught like to do something and then they'll have like hour or so I'm pretty sure to basically like code something and then it'll be graded and then on past events even though this seems so long ago we did our state of mind event because I don't think I was able to present this because I wasn't here a couple meetings ago with obviously Rucker as a speaker and it was very successful we had a lot of participants and um yeah and then we're hoping to be able to continue that and work on the weaknesses of that event to put it into an even better standing next year. And Thank I think you. that's all for me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Staff quick, Preston, what organization are you with? Is it called Youth Advisory Board? Thank you. <laughs> and where would we find definite dates of those things happening? Um, I can send them to you through email. I was going to look at Slack, but apparently it's not working right now. <laughs> <laughs> like where every all the information is, because I'm not um I was part of state of mind group, so our event is already finished for the year. So this is like I'm talking about the other groups. So I'm trying to look into their communications, but unfortunately I can't right now. But I'll definitely send out um, an email for all of these definite times if you guys want them. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Great. Preston, if it's easier, you can send it to me and then I can include it. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, staff report. Okay, I'll be quick. Um, the big one, uh, no formal documents, but I want to invite you all for May 18th, we have Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month celebration. Um, the Circle is hosting um, AAPI event over at the Community Center. Um, you'll be seeing and hearing from me here really soon. We'll have some flyers up there, but it's going to be a very fun event. Um, we have a dragon um, dance performance. We have a, um, a really big um, LA designer. He's uh, from the Philippines. He's flying up here to host oh. a fashion show. Ooh. The circle knows how to have a good time. So they are um, more information on that um, coming your way, but really want to encourage you all to join us. This is our first in-person AAPI um, celebration. I'm so really excited for that. Um, so that'll be coming in May 18th. We have the update. Um, and then also want to put on your radar. We'll talk more about, but we have a Pride um, uh, Pride Month event in June on June 15th. That's a, these are all Saturdays. Um, it's going to be at the lawn right out here. The garage is having kind of their youth fun <laughs> programs, uh, lots of different activities, followed by a um, generational conversation panel. Um, we have uh, Ray Manningham. He's a board member on the equity board who's, um, who is bringing in uh, many organizations and panelists. We'll have a youth and a parent panelist. Um, so that'll be also at the so more information and plans to come your way, but we are in event season. Here it comes. Mm -hmm. Hope you all will join us and consider coming with us. Hey, is that it? Okay, should we should we stop the meeting now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're only about fifteen minutes over. Okay, Thanks. I think we're officially adjourned. Did you have anything you wanted to add to the staff report? No, thank you so much.